Hello and welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information that will help you understand and manage the technology in your home. Uh, today's guest, I'm so excited. I've got Bill Brady. We were just talking. We're actually in the same city right now, and I don't even know why we did this online because I'm like, oh, wait, we could have just done this in person. You should but have. I know, right? You know, hindsight, always 2020. But um, so excited to talk to Bill. Um, I've interacted with him for, for I don't know, like years now, a couple of years? A couple of years, yeah. Yeah. So he is the CEO of TrueMe, which um, I do have some videos on my channel about um, about TrueMe, uh, comparing it to other kids' safe smartphones. Um, but And we'll dig into TrueMe specifically. And actually, I'm just going to split our screen, give us a little, little close up there. Um, but yeah, why don't you just kind of introduce yourself a little bit and then we'll dig into like today's topic. We're just going to talk about kids and phones basically all together, but, um, and then maybe a little true me stuff at the end. Awesome. Awesome. Well, my name's Bill and, uh, like Sarah said, I uh, have the privilege of being the CEO of true me. That's actually not my most important job. Uh, my favorite job is that I've married to a phenomenal lady named Heidi, and we have five incredible kids. And uh, so I'm in the thick of all this, all these things we're going to be talking about today. I'm in the thick of as a dad, too. Uh, yeah. Our oldest is uh, is 19. She's just left the left the nest. She's in her first year of college. Uh, but we Where still have a nice year old. Yeah. You know, she uh, she's at Utah Valley University and going okay. into nursing. And love oh, their nursing fun. school, and that's that's what yeah. she's doing. That's awesome. Um, and then we've got uh, two more teenage girls, and then our little guys uh, are. We've got a ten-year-old son, and we've got a six-year-old. I still have a six-year-old. And that's uh, crazy to me. <laughs> but we, he he is the life of the party, and we have a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah, five kids. Most of my friends, I will say, have five kids. I have two. I am, uh, that was not my, um, I don't know, my calling in life to be, uh, like, you know, a mom of lots of kids, but more power to all my friends and family that have five kids. Cause that's unbelievable. It's uh, it's fun. And I, all the credit goes to, to, to Heidi. She takes care of all the details. I, I would otherwise lose my mind. So yeah. <laughs> We have fun. Yeah. I hear that for sure. And a, a six-year-old, like, I, again, because you're around the same age as me, I, I re feel like I remember. I, I I have a baby face. I guarantee I'm older than you are. I don't know. I'm, I was born in 79. I, I'm, I'll am i be 48 next month. Okay. So, so like yeah, five I got years a few years on you. No, four years maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um so let's dig into today's topic. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is like, and you've got the whole span of kids. So perfect person to talk to you about this. Um, what are some trends that you're seeing with kids and smartphones? Well, number one, uh, every, every family in America that's looking at this topic is realizing that the age at which kids are getting phones keeps getting younger. Um, and so that's that's putting a lot more pressure on families from the perspective of well, all my friends have one. When am I getting one? And that age keeps coming down. Uh, so, you know, all of us deal with that as parents. I've actually done a lot of research, though, on what are the what are the what are the trends that result from more and more kids having phones at younger and younger ages? Uh, oh. There's a book. I don't know if you've read. It's called iGen. Uh, it's oh, I haven't. Her. I have so many like kids <laughs> and like phone books, like first phone and stuff, but I don't think I've heard of this one. Check out a book called iGen. Dr. Jean Twenge is the, the author, and she did a multi generational comparison of, you know, kids, uh, you know, when they're, you know, from the ages of 10 to 18, from the baby boomers to, Gen X to Gen Y and now to, to Gen Z and just looking at, you know, what are the social trends that change as a result of, of these technologies that more and more kids have at younger ages. And some of the things that she calls out that I have definitely seen, um, less time spent face-to-face, -face. you know, there's more, kids are doing more just virtually. 
Uh, she, in her studies, she's seen less time spent on homework, less time in part-time jobs, um, resistance, frankly, to, to taking on some of the adult responsibilities that previous kids were anxious for, like even getting your driver's license, that age I of postponing. You know, I will say, I'm going to just interrupt you for two seconds, that I've totally seen that because my daughter, she is now 17, but uh, like when I turned 16, I got my driver's license the second I was yes. able to get my driver's license. And with my daughter, and the same with my permit, I got my permit the day I turned 15, I got my license the day I turned 16. And with my daughter, when she turned 15, I'm like, okay, hey, we need to schedule to get your, <laughs> your learner's permit. And she's like, eh, you know. And so I'm like, okay, no, here's the date you're getting, your, you're taking your test and you're going to go get your learner's yeah. permit, you know? And then the same thing, she wasn't super interested in learning how to drive. And then, you know, for her driver's license, I mean, I'm, I'm not like super wealthy or anything. I'm not bragging about this, but like we bought her a car, like an acute car. I mean, it was a cheap, like $3,000, like yeah. crappy, crappy uh, she drives a yellow Volkswagen Beetle. Um, but like I found her a car that would like match her personality. So she would get excited about driving, you know? And so it would like, I felt like I had to not bribe her, but yes, bribe her to want to get that driver's license. And for me, it was like, I want that freedom. I want to drive wherever I want to drive. And I just I couldn't understand this whole concept. So it's so interesting that you say that it's a general thing. You know, and, and, and it really is. And, in, you know, the driving one's an interesting example, you know, uh, and I've seen even college kids that don't have driver's licenses. Um, in some ways, there's some good of that. You know, teenage alcohol use is down. Teen oh, pregnancy, down. Those things are good. But it's, beca yeah. it's because kids aren't spending the same face-to-face -face time partying that they that they used to in previous generations so really really interesting trends uh you know the the if you look at the broader consequences of, of what's the technology doing but yeah that's just obviously fascinating to me <laughs> um and w i think a lot like so our generation i remember um you know, parents and stuff getting really down about, um, you know, things like Dungeons and Dragons, like, you know, it was evil and all of this stuff, yeah. you know, but my daughter has a weekly Dungeons and Dragons game. And I think that's really helpful because it helps her have that face to face interaction on a weekly basis with all her friends and they're hanging out and doing things like that. So like now I'm kind of like really grateful for Dungeons and Dragons, like right at this moment. Yeah. I, I totally get it. And, and I think kids are surprised. And I've, I've had this experience with my own kids, you know, where they're at, they're, they're not doing as much socially as I did when I was a kid um, because their friends aren't as social. And, yeah. you know, I, I think we'd be surprised at how many kids are at home on a Friday night, you know, doing video games and social media or whatever else instead of out being together. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I think there, there are, there are ramifications of that, that we can, we can get into. Yeah. Wow. That, um, so you said that, um, we're st seeing kids and smartphones at younger and younger ages. And I wanted to touch on that. Um, do you have an approximate age with all your research that people are getting smartphones now? <sighs> yes. You know, so, um, and this is this is uh, things that I've read, but also just empirical data from my own business, you know, <laughs> um, where we see kids, you know, that are eight, nine, ten is not uncommon. Yeah. Uh, the top of our bell curve, you know, looking at our own customers is 12. Okay. And, uh, and, and that's really the age, I think, when most families are saying, hey, I can't put this off any longer. Right. We've we've got to we've, you know, Bobby, Sally, they need a phone because right. more and more families don't have home phones. You know, that's, a, that's kind of a thing of the past for our generation. And Absolutely. so if you've got kids that are going to be babysitting your own kids or someone else's kids, yeah. they need a way to communicate. So 12 is, is really common, but um, you know, we're, we're even seeing kids as young as, you know, six and seven and eight 
which is really, really young. Uh, yeah. but that, that's, that's happening more and more. Yeah. And people like to throw around these quotes from uh, Bill Gates and from um, Steve Jobs about how their kids, like they wouldn't give their kids phones or whatever. And I'm like, okay, but well, your kids are like, in their thirties now. So <laughs> That's what if you were raising kids right now, yeah. what would your stance be? And like, and that's what I would really like to point out, you know, cause their kids were kids like, you know, maybe when, when we were like teenagers or something, right. when like phones were just coming out and it's a totally different world right now. So like to rely on these quotes, like, well, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs would never have given their kids, you know, an iPhone or a smartphone. Like, well, yeah, but also their kids are 30. So yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. their, their, their kids have numerous kids of their own. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ask their kids if they're giving their kids smartphones. That's what I want to know. That's a great um, point. Right. <laughs> Um, so what do you think parents are most concerned about when they're giving their kids a smartphone? You know, the, there's kind of two categories of concerns. And I think that the, the category that most parents are concerned about, uh, are the, what I call the obvious ones. It's, uh, it's content, you know, so pornography or violence, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Most parents in America would say, that's not something I want my kid to be doing. Yep. Um, predators is another one. You know, you hear the the stories of kids that are contacted through whether it's through games or through social media. It turns into a predatory situation. And there are 500,000, by some estimates, the Bo Biden uh, Foundation says there are 500,000 active online predators today that are trying to groom children. Uh, wow. You know, so some of those numbers are, are terrifying, and that's absolutely something we should be aware of. Um, you know, if you give your kids access to a, a device and the internet, well, if you're not careful, the internet also has access to them. Right. Uh, so it's uh, it's we've got to be careful. And then and then bullying. You know, it used to be when we were kids, bullies have always existed, and but they had a, a limited a limited town square, if you will, when we were kids. You might get bullied at school, but you could get away from the person. And certainly when school ended, you could go home. Well, right. now bullying is, if someone's gonna be a bully, they they have tools and reach at their fingertips that is, is pretty pretty demoralizing and destructive for someone on the receiving end of it. If, if they, you know, if they're being bullied in a social media platform, for example, where thousands and thousands and thousands of people see it, and it can be twenty four seven. So those are those are some of the, the the issues that parents are really concerned about as they're considering when and how should I get my kid a phone. So do you think most parents like so say I'm really concerned about bullying or something, and like most parents are really concerned about this specific thing. Do you think they're right? Or do you think that they're not really seeing what the true issue is? I think they're right, but I think there's more. Um, yeah. So I'm very sensitive to, to the, the less obvious concerns. And I think of things like stress, anxiety, uh, depression, um, in this book that I mentioned, uh, iGen. Uh, I'll link that in the, so for Facebook, YouTube, I will put that link in the description after we're done here so you can um, grab that book. Fantastic. That would be great. I recommend it. Uh, there is some language in it. I'll warn people that comes <laughs> from the research, not from yeah. the author, but things she quotes. So sure. be prepared for a little bit of that. <laughs> but the, the, it's extremely informative. Uh, in terms of understanding today's kids. Um, but one of the things that, uh, that Dr. Twenge really calls out is we have more mental health issues among kids today than we ever have had before. And it's because, you know, we say we're all connected because of our devices, but they actually have an extremely isolating effect. You know, we're connected online, but we're not connected as humans the same way we used to be. And, uh, and that comes with stress and anxiety and, and depression. When you mix in 
if if you're if you're on social media all the time and you're seeing all the things that the other kids are doing and the trips they're going on and the things that their family have and the, it can it can be a real oh my life is really terrible if you yeah. let yourself get into that the truth is people are curating the content they put up none of it's real none of it's a true snapshot of life yeah Yet even kids and adults can get into that trap of oh look at my life i don't have that and yeah. and for kids that can be really that can be really discouraging and, and and depressing that that fear of missing out the anxiety of trying to keep up and i'm not good enough and it, it all takes a toll so yeah dr twingy she just she says we're on the the verge of the biggest mental health crisis our country has ever seen and unfortunately we see that bearing out if you look at statistics from the centers for disease control uh, the rate of teen suicide in this country has nearly doubled since the iPhone came out. It's crazy. In, in, at, in the first years, we could say, oh, you know, correlation versus causation. It's right. becoming very clear there is a causation effect there, that the more time we spend on screens, the more discouraged we are, the less happy we are. Yeah, I love a quote that I've heard, and I don't remember where I've heard it from, but I'm sure it's popular. But like, don't compare your reality to someone else's highlight reel. Yes, yeah. good call. Yeah, so I mean, that helps like with the FOMO and stuff. But um, one thing that I've really kind of um, been a champion of is like, I think a lot of the mental health crisis stems from kids not getting proper sleep. And I think that is... I mean, it's definitely technology related because they're on their phones all night and they have access to their friends at all hours of the day, you know, but when you ensure that your kids are getting a proper amount of sleep every night, there's so much, you know, I feel like that really helps their mental health. And I, I think the causation, I mean, while there's definitely with the FOMO and that all is real, you know, adults feel that and everything. But I think a lot of it kind of boils down to the lack of sleep. That's a huge factor, Sarah. And, and, and she, Dr. Twingy does call that out in her book, too. Oh, good. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the sleep factor cannot be ignored. You're, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right. Um, Is it, go ahead. Yeah, so, and, and that leads to, okay, so if we're going to have devices, how do we manage those devices to take, the, for example, take the sleep factor out of it, you know, uh, right. by just having some, some different ways to manage how devices are used in your home. Yeah. Um, two things that like pop into my head as we're talking about that. I remember when my, my son who is now like almost 14 was an infant and I was having these, you know, not getting any sleep. Cause that's what you do when you're in a, a parent of an infant. Um, and then I remember clearly, even to this day, the first night he slept all through the night and how much of a different person I was that next day. Like, oh my gosh, my brain works. I can do things. Like, what a what an amazing thing a night of sleep can give you. And like, I always think about that when I'm thinking about my kids getting to bed on time and things like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, like that just changes everything. It does. I'm, I'm smiling. I'm chuckling as you say that because... As we had our kids, you know, Heidi would be up with with the babies, and I'd always say, "Hey, you know," well, especially with our first ones, as we were figuring out our pattern as a, as a couple, I'd say, "Hey, well, sh you know, I'll get up and, and hang out with you," kind of thing. Yeah. And she would always say, "Go back to bed. There's no <laughs> sense in both of us being miserable." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. Like, no, we both. One of us needs to have a functional brain so if we can just make sure that happens. Um, and then just something else that I hadn't thought about previously is that um, that's a, a tool that a lot of, um, you know, mind control people will use in order to like brainwash somebody or something like that is yeah. to use lack of sleep. And I'm like, wow, you know, they have this lack of sleep and then they're being brainwashed by these like TikTok videos because of the lack of sleep is making them, you know, a little less That's cognitive. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, it like literally just came to me just now. I'm not not that smart. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's a great point. It makes total sense. Yeah. Um, and then we'll we'll I know we weren't gonna talk about true me stuff until the very end, but we do have a quick question here. Um are the phones available in Australia is what Rob would like to know. Uh Rob, not yet. Uh so we we absolutely um have ideas for taking Trumi to other places in the world. Uh, right now, uh, we're just available in the United States, I'm afraid. Uh, oh, sorry about that, Rob. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put Australia on the on the list. Uh, yeah. We have we have requests coming in from all over the place, and uh, there's it's it's definitely the, the problems that we're looking to help parents with. They're not they're not North American problems. They're global problems. Yeah, for sure. Um, so anyway, back to our discussion, but as we were talking about lack of sleep and stuff, so what kind of rules have you established in your house regarding technology? A great question. For your gaggle <laughs> and, of kids. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like I said, we're, we're in the middle of it. So we, we uh, absolutely, there are some rules that are just rules and it doesn't matter if you're a, one of the younger kids or one of the older kids, you know, we don't want phones in bedrooms at night you know, just this, the sleep factor, the risk factor of spending your, your night going through all kinds of garbage and potentially really damaging garbage, you know, right. So, sure. yeah. so that, that's a, that's a standard rule. You know, we, we, we have a place where, Hey, this is where our, this is where our phones plug in and this is where they rest at night, you know? Right. And uh, so kind of, their bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Generally speaking, we we try to create habits where where in the the any device you know, but phones in particular, they're a tool, not a tyrant. This is not the default for how you spend your time. So when the kids say, "Hey, can I do such and such?" it's it's the it's it's really looking at at the why behind it. Is it is is this something that's going to help them with school? Uh, help them develop a talent or a hobby, or is it just wasting time? And and if it's just, hey, the device or the technology has become the default for how I spend my time, the answer in our home is no. You know, right. we, we, we're we an outside family. You know, we play outside, go on hikes, go play with your friends down the street. And, it's, and that's even changed, right, since we were kids. Yeah. It is hard now for kids just to go and knock on another kid's door and say, you want to play? Because yeah. they get the, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's so different. It's so different. Um, yeah. One of the other things that that we try to uh, that we try to do as a, as a rule. So just and this is this is our family, but we don't do social media uh, for for the kids. You know, my my daughter who's nineteen now, she got her first Instagram account when she was seventeen and a half. And she understood why and she even thanked us for it because she understood why and, and she understood, you know, some of the challenges that her friends were, were going through. Um, in, in our family, too, we've chosen not to do video game consoles. And I don't mind if my kids are over at another friend's house and they play a video game. I, I'm fine. I'm not I'm not stressing about that. But I just didn't want that to be the. All right, I've got two hours till dinner. What am I going to do? I'll I'll just camp out in front of the TV. I'd, again, I'd rather my kids be outside. And those are those are subjective. Those are just our, our personal things. For sure. One one thing that I that uh, I've tried to stress is that people are more important than devices. And we've all been through this scenario as adults, right? Where we'll be try typing a text, responding to an email. One of our kids comes up, hey, mom, hey, dad, and they're, they're excited to show us something or ask a question and they get the, yeah, hold on a second, just a second. Hey, I said just a second. And then we look up from the, from the phone and our kid is gone. Yeah. They've given up and it, break, it breaks my heart, you know, because yeah. they've, they've inadvertently between the lines got the message, hey, you were not as important as my phone. Right. It makes me sick, but we've yeah. all done it. We have all oh, done that. Sure. And yeah. but the lesson the kid goes away with is, 
oh, my phone's more important yeah. than, than anything else. And right. so we try so hard to teach that, that principle that devices are never as important as people. And we're far from perfect at it. Uh, yeah. We all know how hard that is, but that's <laughs> that we try to, we try to help our kids understand. Yeah. And I've tried to do that even before I, I thought that was like a thing. Um, my aunt who is like the beacon of like, you know, if I think of like mother Teresa, like this is my aunt. She is just a lovely woman. Like her kids are all like amazing and everything like that. And I think once I sat down with her, like, what did you do? Like, what have you done with your kids to be this like amazing family? And she's like, well, like anytime they came up to me, if I'm like playing the piano if or I'm like, you know, having a conversation with somebody, I make sure to like look them in the eye and like respond to whatever they're talking about. Now, you do also have to teach them not to interrupt, you yeah. know, so if like if I'm having a conversation with somebody, you can come and like patiently wait your turn, you know, but when it's time to give them attention, you give them your full attention and I've like taken that to heart as I've had kids and things like that. So I'm like, okay, I want to be like Aunt Jill and like do it like she does. She got it. She got it right on. I love that notion yeah. of if you're if you're consciously looking them in the eye, that's yep. that solves the problem right there. Yeah. Um, so we did talk slightly about this, but do any of these uh, rules apply to more than just the kids? Like, so in my house, the internet gets shut off at, you know, a specific time every night and that's across the board. Um, you know, so what about for you? I need to, I need to work less to do that one. <laughs> <I'm still working. laughs> that helps. That helps. Um, one, one thing that we do is, uh, we try to give our devices a break on Sunday afternoon and make Sunday just that. family time. Yeah, You know, it's, we're playing board games where we might even watch a movie together. Like it, it's, yeah. but it's family. It's, you know, the, we're playing cards, we're going on a walk where, you know, but we, you know, we try to say, Hey, it's, it's, this is not, this is not tech day. It's right. let's put the devices away. Uh, so we have some little, little rituals, little rituals like that, 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 that apply to everyone. Um, and, and my wife and I, I mean, we're, we're both uh, consciously not going to bed with devices and, yeah. you know, we've neither, we've never, we've never done the, Hey, my phone is the last thing I look at. And the, you know, when I go to sleep and the first thing I wake up to it's, it's, it's on a variety of levels, that's not healthy. So sure. Yeah. And so we are a video game household. My husband's a gamer and, you know, we've always had, you know, all the video game consoles. Um, but we have kind of a similar rule that if on Sunday, if you're going to play a video game, you have to play with the whole family. So, okay. yeah. So it's kind of similar, like, okay, we acknowledge that you, that we play video games, but on Sunday, if we're going to play a video game, it has to be with the whole family. So that's kind of a similar thing. And we kind of do similarly, like where Sunday, like, you know, we want to watch a movie together or do something, you know, we're a very tech driven household, but, um, but yeah, if it, if it's on Sunday, we do, we like to play board games too. We have the most awesome version of Sellers of Catan you will ever see in your life. Like it's a 3d, like, model thing and and we love to play that oh cool yeah we yeah. like settlers too i'll have to check i'll just have to check out that version <laughs> yeah it's so awesome because we also have a really cool monopoly version that i don't think is even really sold anymore it's a, like a star wars phantom menace like <laughs> monopoly but it's all like 3d and raised and like so the hotels and houses like get clicked into this thing and like the properties like are in slide into this like thing and everything it's like it's amazing but wow very cool. those are my two favorites <laughs> very cool. um any other rules that you can think of before we move on uh you know those are that's kind of the high level those, yeah, those yeah. are the ones that come to mind cool um so how can parents feel a little more comfortable giving their kids a smartphone i think it all comes down to preparation and and i know this is important to you yeah. Uh, you know, it's 
it's not going into it haphazardly uh, or I always, I always say just because everyone else is doing it is not the right reason. Be intentional <laughs> about it because you, know? yeah. you will. As a parent, you'll get to the point where you realize there's a, the, there are benefits for my child to have a phone. And there are benefits for me, for my child to have a phone, like right. you get to that, but, but, but be intentional about it and have a plan, uh, have a, a predetermined understanding with your child about how a phone is used and how it's not used, have a contract with them in that vein and doing those things ahead of time makes it a, a, a lot easier if there is a problem to police it. But I also believe that if you take the time and teach the principles and have the discussions with the kids, instead of just barreling into it, a lot of kids are going to rise to that. If you help them understand why you have a concern about social media, for example, um, they'll, they'll, they, they'll get it. Mm -hmm. But, but the chances of them getting it are, are are difficult if you don't take the time as the parent to explain why. And it's just because yeah. kids, kid, we didn't like it. No kid has ever right. liked this is the rule and you obey the rule. Like, right. you know, and and you'll learn more about this in that iGen book today, in that I, I book Gen I reference. Today's yeah. kids are even more sensitive to I want to know why. Yeah. Not just what's the rule. Right. You know, so I think I think it's it's to it, to have more comfort in giving kids the the smartphone. It's it's starting with the preparation you do, and then it's easing them into it. You yeah. know, I, I've always thought it's best to start kids with a limited experience, mm -hmm. let them learn how to do that responsibly, responsibly, then graduate them into the next level. And as you go into that next level, make sure again that they understand everything that goes with it. So for example, you know, and I'll, and I'll use our, I'll use our device as an example. You yeah, can start sure. a kid with basic talk and basic text. So unlimited talk and basic texting. Uh, you could say for, for a younger kid that they can't do picture texting. Well, right. before you graduate them to picture texting, even though it's uncomfortable to talk about, you talk about what sexting is. Oh yeah. And, and make sure that they understand Hey, you probably have heard of kids doing this. What do you yeah. think about that? Is that a good mm -hmm. thing to do? Is that not a good thing to do? Why isn't that a good thing to do? And, and make sure they understand the why behind it and also understand that it will not be tolerated, that the phone right. is on if it happens. Right. You know? um, and then you go into the next stage. Okay, now we're going to introduce some, some safe apps for, to help you with school and right. uh, a safe web browser and whatever those things are that you choose to introduce do it do it step by step and let them learn as they let them learn as they go teach them yeah, as they I, go i i love that and that's the, the concept that i've always taken or the path i've always taken with my kids as well you know just stepping them through these and then i actually kind of like help let them lead the way into like getting into the next step. And so, you know, they plead their case or something like that. I'll determine, you know, sometimes I'll still say no or whatever. Um, and my favorite example of this, I think when my 17 year old was maybe like 13 or something, maybe 14, it was really late. She like, she asked me when she goes, can, can my bedtime be later? And I'm like, Oh, yeah, you're like 13. You don't need an eight o'clock bedtime anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Kudos like to you, Sarah. Think, <laughs> think of how much extra peace and extra sleep you got as a result. That's good. <laughs> well, I go to bed at like nine o'clock. So there's that. But she's like, can my bedtime be a little late? I was like, oh, yeah, you are a teenager now, aren't you? <laughs> like. That's but awesome. that didn't really cross my mind. But like, but she led that. I'm like, oh yeah, of course. You know, you're definitely old enough. And then it actually just recently happened again. Um, she's 17 and a half. She's gonna be 18 in just a few months. And she was asking me about Tumblr. Um, she's like, hey, so I was thinking about maybe getting allowed being allowed to have Tumblr. And I'm like, Maddie, I've already like turned off all the like monitoring on your stuff. Like 
you can, you're almost 18. You can choose to have Tumblr if you want to have Tumblr, you know, but like helping them understand like, okay, I've stepped you through this. Like now you are able to make these decisions on your own. Um, and like, and I'll say, here's the like pluses and minuses of Tumblr. So you can make that call. You know, there's going to be inappropriate content that you'll be able to access and things like that. So like, and then I had to unblock it for her, but, um, but it's the same thing. Like, oh yeah, I can see like, you're almost 18. We've gotten you to this point and now it's time to like, let them go. But stepping them through that, they understand the, yeah. the concept. Yeah. If, if, that, that's the way to do it. You know, if you're doing it step by step, you know, think of giving, you know, we talked about the age coming lower and lower. Think yeah. of just giving, a 12 year old or an 11 year old or a 10 year old, Hey, here's, here's an iPhone 14 pro and it does anything and everything. Right. Good luck. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's not going to end well. No, no, absolutely. Um, and then like having those conversations, I think are really important as well. You know, I have had frequent conversations with my 13, almost 14 year old about privacy because he's still highly monitored because he's just, you know, he's 13, almost 14, yeah. just stepping into social media and things like that. And, um, and I'm, so I'm still, you know, highly monitoring his device and he's like, well, that's not fair. And I'm like, okay, let's have a conversation about privacy. You know, like is something that you send in a direct message to your friend, is that completely private, you know? And like you have to walk them through, oh, okay, well, yeah, I just sent it to them, but they could screenshot it. They could, you know, record it with another phone. They could do whatever to send that to people you didn't intend to send it to. So is that private? Okay. So why do you think you have any privacy on your phone, whether it's from me, whether it's from the rest of the world? you don't. And I'm like, I don't have any privacy. You know, and then he was like, how would you like it if I just like took your phone and like look through it? I'm like, here you, here go. you go. <laughs> <laughs> have at it. Like I have, like you can take my phone anytime and I will let you look through everything that I'm doing as well. Because I know I don't have privacy on my phone. And you shouldn't think you have privacy either. Very well said. Yeah. Very well said. The only the only time I wouldn't hand my phone over is like Christmas when they're going to spoil right. surprises. Other than that, they can have at it. <laughs> right, right. Like, just don't open Amazon. Don't look at my card. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I love that that we have the conversations, and that's super important to me. And um, the other thing that goes with that, Sarah, like, I think the more the more you have those conversations and. Uh, the more consistently you have them, the more open they are. Like take the sh take the shame out of it. Like that that's Absolutely. another thing I always say to parents. Like, no shame. Don't 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 ever go the shame route because you want to have the kind of re relationship where, if the child does get into a problem, they can come talk to you. And if there's shame, that's so hard. So yeah. it's, 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 it should all, you're the parent, you're in your, you'll always be the parent, but they've got to know that your love is unconditional. And if you make a mistake, if they make a mistake, they can talk to you without, without being beaten up and, and shamed for it. And, 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 and discipline is different than shame, two very different things, you know? Yeah. I did a live with Clay from Fight the New Drug, who I know you know as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, we talked exclu like not exclusively, extensively about this. Um, and you know, from my example, my son will come to me and say, "Hey, I saw something inappropriate. This is where I saw it, or whatever." And you know, I'll always say, "I'm sorry that happened to you." You know, do you like should we block whatever site it was that you saw something inappropriate on, or if it's if it's a a site you would like to go back to what can we do to like prevent that from happening again and things like awesome. that so we have these conversations where he doesn't feel like shame for coming to me hey you know but like and sometimes he'll say like i saw something inappropriate and i closed it and then sometimes he'll even say like i saw something inappropriate and i kept looking you know 
and we have those conversations like, okay, yeah. you know, what can we do about it? And, you know, I'm sorry that happened to you. That sucks. Cause you know, nobody should see that, you know, and things like that. That's, that's, that's a great, that's a great way to approach it. Yeah. Um, so even with a great solution like TrueMeFone, what else should parents do to help their kids use technology a bit safer, a bit better, a bit healthier? Yeah. So you you just hit on a on a on a, a point there that especially for younger kids, you know, you can't have the attitude of set it and forget it. Yes. You know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I think some parents, well-intentioned parents, yeah. feel like. If I set up parental controls, uh, I don't have to worry about it again. Right. But the truth is technology changes. Uh, the sites being monitored or controlled change. Things change. And uh, so I, I've always said this is it's, it's never set it and forget it. Uh, nothing absolves you from being a parent and having the, the responsibility. So if, yes. if your kids are using technology, if they're consuming media, yeah, keep an eye on it. Yeah. Uh, keep an eye on it. You know, that's why we built into, into our product, we built something called remote text monitoring. So the, right from what we call our, our parent portal, you can see all your kids' texts, everything that comes in, everything that goes out. And your kids know that. It's not a secret. Yeah. Your kids know that you have access to that. But it does get, it, it does get away from the awkward, okay, let me see your phone. I'm going to go through your messages now. You can just do it on the fly, uh, yeah. And and it, it provides a high level of uh, comfort, you know, peace of mind to be able to to see what's what's going on exactly. Um, so that's that's my kind of my first thought is, don't ever not be involved. You've got to be involved. Um, Absolutely. And and again, I I think those those check in conversations are are good. I have a, this is enough. This is not a technology thing, but it's another family <laughs> tradition where sure. the technology stuff can come up more easily. Right. Um, we've always made it a point. Uh, Heidi and I will joke that bedtime takes 90 minutes in our house yeah. <laughs> to get all the kids in bed. Right. Well, part of that is that at the end of the day, we try to make that just, uh, it's easier with younger kids. It gets harder with older kids, but we right. try to have a few minutes with each child, you know, and not both of us at the same time, but Sure. Like I'll, I'll go through and I'll tuck in the kids and Heidi might do it separately and they get two tuck-ins, right. but, right. but it's, you know, for our younger kids, it's kneeling beside their bed and just talking for 10 minutes for our older kids. They might be in the middle of their homework, yeah. but they're, they're still welcome dad to come in and sit on the floor and just talk about their day for a few minutes. And, you know, the boy that they like or the dance that they got <laughs> invited to, whatever it else it is. Yeah. And but it's in it's in those forums that it's also easy to to check in on. Hey, how are things going with your phone? Any yeah. any any you know any concerns? What about this? What about and just ask questions. And if you have that kind of ongoing dialogue, yeah. it's it's not nearly as awkward as it sounds. It's actually pretty easy. Absolutely, for sure. Um, and I love that. You know, it's so funny because a lot of parents I know will say, "Oh, you know, my kid's like fine." Hi you know, how you doing? And I don't really have that experience with my kids. And I think it's because I take the time, you know, look them in the eye and, you know, my daughter will come to me and literally tell me about every single piece of homework that she has to do still, you know, and sometimes in your head, you're like, oh, fine, just go do it. Like, you don't need to tell me about every single piece of homework, you know, but they want to talk. So, yeah. you know, give them that space and that opportunity to talk, even if like you're just sitting there for a minute, you know, because I think at the beginning, it might be a little awkward and you might stumble through it. But um, but yeah, just giving them that space to like talk about what they want to talk about, even if it's, you know, a diatribe on Minecraft or Pokemon <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> And if you have that, if you have that kind of relationship and habit, then the 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 conversations about boundaries and about hey, this is the way we do technology in our family, all those things are easier if you already have that respectful, fun, trusting dialogue every day. 
Right. Absolutely. Um, and I also, a lot of people, and I, I've seen like m comments about this and things like that, where like a news thing will come out that is scary. You know, this kid, you know, did something to his life. I, I'm not going to say it because I'll get yeeted from YouTube. Um, because he was getting blackmailed with, you know, images that he took and sent off to, you know, people who were blackmailing him, you know. And so when you see those news articles, sometimes you're like, oh, you know, this is so scary. And you don't approach your kids and talk about it. Like they don't know about these dangers and things like that, you know. Yeah. So I'll like pull the article up on my phone and be like, hey, did you see this article? Like, oh, my gosh, you know, that's that's so tragic, you know. Have any, has anybody ever asked you for something like that? Like, what would you do if something happened like this, you know, and kind of step through some of these pitfalls that you see so many other teens making on the news um, and, you know, have those conversations with them about that as well. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> great. A hundred percent. That's the, and that's the perfect forum to do it. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Trumi specifically. Um, what made you want to create this kid safe smartphone? You know, this, the full answer to that goes back a couple decades, as weird as that sounds. Um, when I was a, a university student, um, this is, this is before the year 2000. So it's going back away. And, uh, I always had this sensitivity about humans and technology. Like I wrote a term paper about oh, the that's awesome. humanizing effects In of the technology. 90s. That's awesome. And this is before everyone had cell phones and it was right. before text messaging and certainly before social media. For sure. Um, so I've always been sensitive to it. And I think it's because of a couple, a couple books I read when I was young and impressionable, you know, on the subject. <laughs> right. Um, but as when Heidi and I got married early on, we were having the conversations of, hey, how are we going to do such and such with technology in our family? And yeah. those conversations accelerated as smart, you know, first phones became ubiquitous and then smartphones came out and then social media started. And uh, so we, we, we just kind of always had conversations about how we wanted it, how we wanted that to go down in our house. Um, I spent my career in marketing. That was also formative, where I had a firsthand view into how powerful some of these technologies were. Frankly, how creepy some of them are right. in terms of, <laughs> you have no idea, but there are consumer databases in this country that know everything about sure. everyone. And yeah. like the reach and the power of, of technology is, is, uh, is staggering. Yeah. And, you know, a, a few years ago, I was kind of at a point in my career where I needed to do something more meaningful. Um, I'd run a couple of marketing agencies and I was really looking for a, a way to to take everything I'd learned and do something more in, meaningful. I actually got involved in the in the in the space and, and started to get acquainted with this with this space before I, I determined that there needed to be a, a better solution out there that uh, it wasn't just enough to say to a kid, hey, here's this is a phone and it's safe because you can do so little on it. I realized that if, if, if the child was actually going to use that device, it needed to be more flexible. Yeah. It needed to be more practical. It, it needed to, I, the, the vision I had was it, it needs to grow with them as their needs and maturity evolve. Absolutely. And so that, that that's what led to the, the start of Trumi. And, and there was a, a phenomenal guy that I had worked with in another venture briefly uh, with a product development background. And and I reached out to him and said, man, this is what we're doing. Are you, nice. you want to come do this? And yeah. he was 100 percent in and and we've been great business partners and, and uh, took Trumi to market. That's awesome. Yeah. When it came out, um, A, you talked about the message um, message history, basically, on on the TrueMe parent portal. Um, and I know that we had conversations about that before it came out. That was a yeah. huge sticking point for me that I saw um, a lack of in the market um, 
where like my parents want to be able to see this remotely. They don't want, you know, a kid could delete the message on the phone before I even got it. You know, that doesn't make it safe just because it's only texting. You know, you need to be able to monitor those texts and you need to be able to control time. You need to be able to shut it down at night because, you know, it's great to have a bed, a, a bedtime place for all the technology. But if your parents are really heavy sleepers, like some people I know, um, they, you know, they could just go down and get it at one o'clock in the morning when the, when the parents are asleep, you know? So that solution for me, like, you know, and that's not a solution we, I, and I love that parent that people do that. You know, I think it's a great thing to do to have them, but that's just not something that I ever did because of like, that's not going to help because I wouldn't even know if they went and got it. If it was right next to my bed, I wouldn't know that they came and got it, you know? So I needed another solution to yeah. shut everything down at night, you know? And so that, that doesn't work for, in my house, but that doesn't make it safe to like not be able to control the time, be able to control the messages and things like that. So and, and really in that same that. vein, it was also, you know, being able to control who the phone yeah. could communicate with. Absolutely. You know, so we do something called safe listing where, you know, children can add the numbers to their phone, but if you have this turned on, the parent has to approve that number before yeah. the child can accept calls or make calls with that number or likewise with text messages. Um, Cause it, it, it doesn't do any good if, if the, if the child can talk or text with anyone, it, that, that doesn't right. solve the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Uh and so, and I also love that you can add apps to your, your phone. So, um, walk me through that. Cause I know it's like a process to get an app approved yeah. uh, for Trumi, which I appreciate that you're not going to just, you know, open up the entire app store. Cause a lot of parents will ask me like, what do you think about this app? And what do you think about this app? And what do you think about that app? And with a solution like Trumi, okay, we've already tested all of these apps. Here you go. And here's what you know, here's some downsides to those apps. Um, so what kind of process do you go through for that? And I just kind of want a little more insight on that. Yeah. And you're right. It is a rigorous process and we probably take a little bit of heat, you know, yeah. for, Hey, this takes a long time, you know, like, and, and it's cause we're very careful about it. So number one is that our, our customers, our users, um, or their parents submit app requests and uh, and we prioritize all those based on demand. Sure. Um, you know, sometimes there's a special a special use case. You know, there's a an app called Dexcom that helps kids that are use the phone to regulate insulin intake. Right. It's a medical thing, and we made that happen. You know. Right. Uh, right. But there's, there's not like a ton of people requesting that because it's very like a limited population that right. needs it. But the ones who need it, need it. Need it. Yeah. Yeah. So for our, for the for kind of the mainstream apps, you know, we prioritize those based on demand. And then we have members of our technology team uh, that just take those one at a time. And the first thing they do is vet the app for content. If there's anything that's pornographic it's immediately gone. <laughs> uh, if it's a social media app, well, that's, that's just a line we've drawn. We don't do social media. So if it's a social media app, it's gone. Um, so those are kind of the two first easy vetting things. And then it's, then it's the question of, are there any unintended backdoors to communication here? So for example, some apps will have a, an in-app browser. Right. And you know, it, on our phone, we have it set so parents can say, I don't want a browser. And, you know, in, in that case, if there is an in-app browser, does it pose a, a, a workaround or is it, a, a, is it something that, you know, we can't control? If we, if we can't control it, it's out. We, right. we, we don't allow it. There are some cases where we find a potential loophole that we can plug. And where our, our technologists can say, yeah, that could be a workaround, but not if we do this. Sure. And they can kind of plug the hole. If that's the case, then we could still approve it. Right. Um, so once it goes through that, that vetting process, then we, we make it available inside our parent portal. There's no app store on the phone itself. 
parents choose the apps from within their parental controls. And I suggest doing that with your kids, like sit yeah. down with your kids, look at the apps that are available and have those constructive discussions about needs. You know, what do you need? What are the apps that you need for school? Uh, okay, here are, the, here are the digital classroom apps. Which ones do your, does your school use? Canvas and Skyward, click, click, and they're on the phone. You know, we've got apps for spirituality. We've got apps for music. We've got apps for, for healthy hobbies, including a lot of those outdoor things that I'm always pushing, <laughs> like Strava and All Trails, for example. Because I, I, I want kids to be outside. Do you have and, a geocaching uh, app? <laughs> we need a geocaching app. That, that's what that's a that's one that we need. Uh, if you have a recommendation, I'd love to hear it. I think there's like a standard, like I think it's just called like geocaching, and it's like a a standard one, like branded or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll check it out. We check into our, that. Our family's done so, some of that. That is fun. It is fun. That's yeah. fun. So that that's that's kind of an overview of the process. I love it. Um, and I know also that you guys on the um, portal where you're choosing those apps, if it does have some sort of, you know, say Google Docs where they can basically chat with their friends on a Google Doc, you Through have comments. warnings. Yeah. You have warnings on those. Like, yeah. Right? There, there, are, there are some examples. Google Docs is a great one, you know, yeah. where uh, that's certainly not the intention of the app, but right. kids are unbelievably smart. Yeah. Um, we found something similar inside of a Bible study app where yeah. kids could say, meet me on John 7, 12. Right. And <laughs> like, incredible. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if there, if there is something, uh, if there is something like that, we'll, we'll call it out. Yeah, for sure. And then, and then the parent can decide, okay, do I, what's the risk versus reward on, on that particular app? And, and that changes. Um, from it just to reminds child, me family to family. Right, right. Um, it reminds me, my grandfather was a prisoner of war in World War II, but he always said that it's the prisoner's jobs to try and escape. And it's the like the jobs of the like people who are guarding them to prevent them from doing so. And I've always thought about it. I'm like it's the kid's job to like find every loophole they can. Um, and it's the parents' job to keep trying to plug those loopholes. So as a as a that's in your in your right, we take that so seriously that we have a group of beta testers. You know, anytime we're we're releasing a new feature, we have a group of beta testers that it, that goes to first. We have kids in that group. Nice by design. Yeah, and and uh, you know, and challenge them. Hey, break this. See if yeah. you can break this. And we want to know if you can. And uh, of course, they they love the the challenge. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's like white hat hackers too. You know, you hire the white hat hacker to try and hack your system, so you can like find out where your vulnerabilities are. But yep. I love that. That's it. Um, so speaking of that, this is my last question for you. Are there any true me features that are coming soon <laughs> that you can tell us about? Oh, Sarah, we've got some <laughs> exciting stuff coming. I uh, love it. I'm not ready to talk about it. <laughs> I, it's okay. I'm, I get it. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a trade off here. Okay. As soon as I'm ready to talk about it, I'll give you the exclusive. Ooh, okay? there we go. Uh, there's that. we've got some really exciting stuff uh, in development. We brought on some some new engineers at the end of last year, who are incredible, uh, and uh, and bring some technology from some other areas. Uh, so we've got some exciting stuff in the works. As soon as we've got that release dates finalized, I will give you an exclusive and I'll, I'll, I'll let you announce it here first. Perfect. I love that. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, well, Bill, is there anything else we missed? Do you want to touch on before we wrap up here? I just, I just give kudos to all the parents who are taking the time to think about these things. Uh, in being really intentional as parents and and thinking, because we're we're all dealing with this conundrum, right? Technology is fantastic. Technology is going to help our kids realize their dreams, discover their passions, develop their talents. It's fantastic. 
and they've our kids have to be able to use technology. Yeah. The, 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 the paradox is that those same technologies can also destroy our kids' potential if yeah. left unchecked. So if you're here and listening, kudos to you for taking the time and, and getting educated and asking the hard questions and being deliberate about it. Um, there are solutions out there. And, and so your, your kids can have everything that's helpful in technology with none of the garbage. And so my, my hat's off to you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much, Bill, for taking the time to talk with me today. Um, loved the conversation. I'm excited to see the feedback from it. Um, and I'm excited to get some exclusive access down the road when, when I've got some stuff, more stuff to talk about. So that'll be awesome. Fun. Thank you, Sarah. Great to be with you. No problem. Have a good one and we'll see you guys next week.